I think Vienna is fantastic. When I moved there, I moved into a VG with two guys, a Daniel and a Mohammed. Now, Daniel is an Orthodox religious Jew who looked like a Turkish dude. And Mohammed was a German Turkish dude who looked like he was part of the Hitler Jugend. <laughs> Seriously, man, he had the blonde hair, blue eyes, he was whiter than I am. He was so white, he couldn't even buy drugs at the hot spots. That's how white he was. Like, you know, we'd both take a taxi and i jump out of the cab and all the drug dealers in every proximity just go like, yes, that guy. <laughs> and then Mohammed jumps out of the cab after me and all the drug dealers go like, police operation. <laughs> it was very different. Also, I... Mohammed was a guy who I, uh, I found out while we were living together that he's a guy who's uh, kind of hard to make happy. Because uh, I found this out when a, somewhat of a tragedy happened. He had a goldfish that died. Now I understand there's certain pets that if they die, you don't just jump to the new one right away. Like if your dog dies, you don't just get a new one right away. Or if your cat or girlfriend dies, you don't just... It's not cool. It's not cool, right? But I didn't think goldfish was this category, so the next day I just thought, hey, I'm gonna like, be nice to him. I bought him a goldfish, and you know, they always give them in that little plastic bag in the water, so I go home, relax, side, it's like, hey, Mohammed, look! And he goes, what's that? And I go, well, it's a transparent bag, so I thought it was kind of obvious, but I got you a goldfish, man, and he lost it. He was like, no, that's not cool, man. It died less than 24 hours ago. That, you can't do that, man. I want one like the last one. So I killed it. <laughs> he wasn't happy about that either. Some people just cannot be satisfied. <laughs> but we're still good friends, you know. He, he, uh, tells me stuff. That's why living in such a diverse environment I think is so cool because you find out about stuff that you normally would never find out about. Mohammed told me he used to live in Berlin and he told me, bear with me, that in Berlin there's something that's called a gay, Jewish, Muslim community. I'm sorry, is this only surprising to me? <laughs> No, like that, that's it. Like all of you are going, yeah, there's two at my corner. <laughs> They're all over lips. It's just, yeah. I'm glad you guys got that because I did this joke once in Salzburg and one guy just goes, gay Jew Muslims. So like an educated person, I, meant, I, I said, what? And he goes, what are gay Jew Muslims? And I was like, no dude, gay Jews and gay Muslims, not gay Jew Muslims. <laughs> What is even that? What's a gay Jew Muslim? Right? Like, how would that even happen? Like, well, you know, my mother is Jewish, my father is Muslim, and I turned out fabulous. <laughs> and also, what I, I, I didn't Google it. Because I, I, I don't know if it's true. I want to live in a world where it's true, because I think it's beautiful. Because think about this, the two groups who are most famous in the world for not being able to work together, apparently the one thing they can get behind is each other. Isn't that wonderful? And you know, maybe it's not even a positive thing. This is one of the reasons why I didn't research it, because it might not be positive. It might be more of a fuck the enemy thing. But then again, ladies and gentlemen, that is how you fuck the enemy. Remember those hippies from the 70s like, make love, not war. Well, guess who's doing both at the same time without anybody dying. It's marvelous.